After narrowly missing out last season in the National League playoff final, we needed to add some quality to this squad. Unfortunately, losing our two best players from last season, going to Aston Villa for a combined fee of 1.2 million, we needed a massive influx of new players. Because this season, we are going for promotion to League Two. That's right, season four. We've had three seasons now in this league. We need to push for promotion. Unlucky both times in the last two seasons, playoffs and playoff final, both defeats. I think we can go one further this season and actually get promotion to League Two. Like I said in the intro, we had to sell two players. Aston Villa came in from both at 600,000, but uh, Oakley Cannonier and Dante Casanova both had really good seasons. But we did manage to add a loan back for the season, so they're still here, technically. So last season, we made 1.6 million in transfers going out, which is fantastic. Great news. We spent 600,000 of it in the summer. Our highest fee was 185,000 for Jake Timberlake. He doesn't look like nothing like Justin. He's all right, he's not bad. My scouts rated him very highly, but he can't get in the team at the moment, which is a bit of a... Bit of a worry. Callum Hewitt for 80,000 came in from Bristol City, a central midfielder. Oliver Bainbridge, a left back, 21 year old, from Stoke for 80,000. Remy Savage from Edinburgh City for 40,000. Jack Butler from Oxford City for 18,000. Archie Chamberlain from Woking for 15,000. Centre back. Demi Lusala, a right back from Worthing for 12,000. And of course, you know I like a free transfer. Jimmy Miley was released from Swansea. Good National League player, great player, 22 years old, currently suspended. Of course, himself. got himself sent off. Joao Gobardinha, a free transfer, released from Tottenham. He's not a bad player, he's not a bad player. He has got potential. That's the main one. This one, he's got potential championship player, so he should be here for a few years. Luca Portelli, another new gen. Okay, he's only got potential of being a League Two player, but set midfielder. It do for me 14 passing, released from Brighton. And then Ben Jackson, who's also released from Brighton, a defender. Not bad, six foot two, right foot, tackling, marking, decent for the standard. Matt Turner, a new gen on loan from Bournemouth. He's valued at nearly eight million. He's a very good National League player, potentially a Premier League player in the future. He's coming on loan and he's been injured since we got him. He's out for a few months. For about, no, he's been out for about a month. So he's a couple more weeks left there on him before he goes back in. Another loanee, Mark Smith on loan as well from Southampton. Good National League player, 18 years old. He's been banging it in. Three goals and six appearances. Another loanee, Jay Robinson, a striker. Scoring goals for fun. On loan from Southampton. But mind you, Southampton have got a very good youth setup. So if we can loan a couple of their players, why not? Three goals in six appearances. And finally, Hayden Eldershaw on loan from Birmingham. A defender, very, very good. 18 years old. Potential Premier League wonder kid, I think. How have we been getting on in the league? So far, we are undefeated. First game beat Bromley 4-0. Uh, beat Kidderminster 5-0. Watchdale 1-0. Warsaw 4-2. Gateshead 7-1 and Barnet 5-2. So we do sit top of the National League by five points already at this stage. And Daniel Antunde with six goals. He's not getting any better, but he's got 23 goals in 45 appearances. One over two games. He is wanted as well by Burton. If I do pick best 11 without restrictions, this is what we come up with. It's not a bad squad at all. But young. Casanova, Forlan, Elna Shaw, Oliver Bainbridge, Charlie Finney. Charlie Finney, a free transfer from Crew, a very good National League midfielder. Jasper Pattenden, Mark Smith, Daniel Olatunde, and Jay Robinson is our, is our best 11. Is this the season we finally get promoted? Will we actually get into the FA Cup proper this time? The last two seasons we haven't. We've failed at the fourth qualifying round. I think now it's time to really, we've got to push on. Another season in the National League is a bit hard. Right, let's simulate season four and see what happens. In September, we started off with a 2 0 win against Barrow and then drew against our bitter rival, Jovil 0 0, before beating Cheltenham 2 0 with two late goals from Callum Hewitt. First goal was in the 82nd minute with a great strike, and then the 90 minute plus one. Hewitt got his second and secured all three points. 
And in the league, we are top of the table by five points. We managed to win an FA Cup fourth round qualifying round against Gibbonham 2 1 with two penalties from Dante Casanova. Matthew Lewis getting the score and underway for Chippenham in the 27th minute before a penalty in the 37th minute from Dante Casanova sending the keeper the wrong way. And then a second penalty, the keeper nearly got to it, but we go through to the first round. Casanova got a hat trick of penalties against Blythe in a 5 1 win, was followed up with a 3 1 win over FC Halifax. In the league, we are top of the table by five points clear. Warsaw are close behind us. And we managed to sign June Sunup Bell on a free transfer. What a sign this kiddie could be for us. In the FA Cup first round, we beat Spennymoor 2 1 with a late goal from Jay Robinson. Thriller and Gunga with the opening goal in the eighth minute before Corey McGowan in the 66th minute made the scores level with this finish. But Jay Robertson in the 84th minute got us the winner so we progress into the second round of the FA Cup. A 2 old draw against Scarborough away from home kept us undefeated. And a shock in the FA Cup second round, beating League One Port Vale. Soon up Bell opened the score in the middle 11th minute before making it 2-0 in the 32nd minute. Thomas Sang from the penalty spot got Port Vale back into it before Jay Robinson just before the halftime whistle made it 3-1 at halftime and that is how it finished. We are in the third round. We are still top of the table but Warsaw have slowly closed the gap. It's now down to three. FA Trophy third round and we beat Bath City 3-2 to progress into the next round. We smashed Kidderminster 5-2 in the league. Soon up Bell get himself a hat-trick. And the top of the table clash against Warsaw. We win 2-1. Jay Robertson just before the stroke of half-time making it 1-0. Soon up Bell got the second making it 2-0 with 15 minutes to go. Max Walkman got a goal back for Warsaw in the 89th minute but it was too little too late. We secured all three points. And in our first defeat of the season, we lose 3-1 to Bromley with three very late goals from Bromley to secure three points. But not to matter, we are eight points clear at the top of the table going into January. And in the FA Cup third round, we beat Championship side Rotherham 6-3. Robertson got the score underway in the 12th minute. Before Brendan Weir doing the 16th minute got Wotham's equaliser. Daniel Atunde made it 2-1 in the 20th minute. Before Michael Frey got Wotham back in the game making it 2-2 in the 25th minute. Injury time in the first half and soon up Bell got us back into the lead in 3-2. Before Jay Robinson just passed the hour mark making it 4-2 in the 63rd minute. It was then 5-2 when Charlie Finney scored an absolute peach of a goal in the 72nd minute. Rotherham got a goal back though in the 88th minute through Will Langshire. And in the 90 plus 8th minute, Zunot Bell got his second and put us through into the 4th round. We beat Bamber Bridge 4-0 in the FA Trophy 4th round. And in the 4th round of the FA Cup, we faced Worthing of all teams, winning 5-2. Worthing got the game underway and in the first minute they took the lead. Before two minutes later, Oakley Cannonier getting the equaliser and only three minutes have been played. Max Deutsch made it 2-1 to us in the 17th minute. Before a Sunup Bell penalty in the 26th minute made it 3-1. Scoring went down there though. Oliver Bangbridge in the 37th minute made it 4-1 at half time. Before Ethan Coleman got a goal back for Worthing. But ten minutes later, Matt Turner turns up and we win 5-2. That was followed up with a 4-1 win over Ultrium. And in the league table, we are 10 points clear of Warsaw, still only tasting the feet once. In the FA Trophy fifth round, we beat Bambi 5-2. Jack Timberlake getting himself two goals. Before a one-all draw against our rivals again, we just can't seem to beat Yeovil. And in the FA Cup fifth round, Liverpool came to Weston. Losing 3-1, but we got off to a perfect start when Callum... Hewitt in the 27th minute put us 1-0 up before a penalty in the 34th minute by Mansvuk 
made the scores level. Harvey Elliott put Liverpool ahead in the 36th minute, 2-1. And a minute into the second half, Mansell got his second, Liverpool's third, and they progress into the next round of the FA Cup. What a great run we've had. And in the league, we are now 13 points clear with 10 games to go. Surely we cannot throw this away. And in the FA Trophy quarterfinal, we lost 3-2 to Barnet. No trip to Wembley this year, I'm afraid. And with a few games to go, we started to bottle it. Bournemouth beating us 1-0. Surely we cannot throw this away. We've had a hell of a season. We cannot throw this away. Going into the game against Boston, we knew three points would secure our promotion to League Two. And Jack Timberlake turned up with his dancing feet, making it 1-0 early on. But in the second half, we pushed Boston all the way. And Callum Hewitt made it 2-0. And we had one hand on the trophy. Jack Timberlake, he hasn't played many games this season, but when he has played, he has scored some vital goals, and this was one of them. We win 3 0, which means Western Supermare have won the National League, and next season they will be playing in the Sky Bet League 2. Three seasons in the National League. I'm lucky in my last two, but we go up as champions. Finally, we have been promoted into League Two. What a season that was. Not just in the league, but in the FA Cup, getting to the fifth round to lose to Liverpool. It's not a bad season at all. FA Trophy, we lost in the quarterfinals to Barnett. 3-2, but never mind. Never mind who's a final. Is Crawley older shot? We had we still had a good chance of winning that if we saved it, but unfortunately Barnet won on the day. But to lose three one against Liverpool is it's a great great season. We're in the final, Chelsea and Liverpool. Hey, get to the fifth round, money, 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 money as well. All good. But the main one, the league table finishing on hundred and ten points. We are. Promoted as champions into League Two, and guess who comes up with us? Our bloody rivals, Yeovil Town. Win through the playoffs. 34 wins, 8 draws, 4 defeats. Two of those defeats were the last couple of games of the season. We've already been promoted, we would have won the league then, so I wasn't too worried. Squad wise, who got what? Jude Sunup Bell with 19 in 26 games came in in october as a free transfer he was on the list it was like how on how has no one picked him up signed for us had a great season great potential decent Premier League potential great we can keep hold of him fantastic he is going to be our main striker for the next couple of seasons but he finished with 19 goals and 14 assists second is dante casanova with 15 goals and eight assists for our right back 15 goals for a right back. Aston Villa could have a little good player there. Uh, Daniel on the Tunde with 14 in 31. Oliver Bainbridge, our left back with 13 goals and 5 assists. Callum Hewitt, set midfielder, 12 goals, 13 assists. Jasper Padden, 11 goals, 13 assists. On loan, Matt Turner with 7 goals and 10 assists. Oakley Canada with 7 goals and 6 assists. Not great for a striker. Charlie Finney had seven goals and six assists. Assist wise, who got the most? Soon up Bell with 14. And everyone else, Rio. Kinematron, eight assists in 24 appearances. Not bad. Sonny Singh's on loan somewhere else. Jack Butler, another defender, seven assists. Just goes to show that this tactic works with the right players. It's been a slog in the National League. It's been three seasons there. Finally, we unlocked it. We're now going to be in League 2 with no transfer money, no budget. We have a wage budget of 7. We could possibly 239, which ain't too bad if we move the budget around a little bit. Players will be leaving, some contracts expiring. A lot of players asking to leave as well, so that's a couple of grand there. Saved up on wages if you don't want to be out. I'll get rid of you. It's fine. It's no harm to me. Players haven't really played. Timberlake, seven games, five goals, asking to leave. Um, highest transfer fee in the summer. He wants to leave. 
Lafferty didn't play at all. He's on the ground a week. It's one of those. But the contract went out soon, I think. No, he's not. Next year, we will be in League Two. And there's some big teams in League Two as well. Playoff-wise, it's not been done yet. Wigan, we won't be facing them. They're going up, same as Crew and Colchester. We will have the likes of Wickham, Swindon, Tramail, AC, Wimbledon, Chesterfield, Scumfort, Northampton, Southend, Forest Green, Cambridge, Bradford City, Newport, Grimsby. Who's coming down? Fleetwood, Stevenage, Port Vale, Doncaster, all coming down. So it's going to be difficult next season. Let's be honest, it's going to be a relegation fight. I think the players we got were good enough avoid relegation maybe push for a mid-table it sounds about right if you have enjoyed today's episode please like comment and smash the subscribe button if you're new to my fm24 content and you want to see more it'd be fantastic it's taken us four seasons to get from the national league south to league two it's not bad it's not bad at all we still got a long way to go and we can only sign english players still whose idea was that until next time, guys, take a stay, look after yourself, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Doodles.